the first tone, my mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. My mouth shall speak you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. Brethren, obey those who rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honestly. But I beseech you rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now may the God of peace that brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenants, make you perfect in every good work, to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And to thy spirit, in the eighth tone, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come, let us rejoice in the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to God our Savior. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Second tone, the mouth of the righteous shall meditate wisdom, and his tongue shall speak of judgment. sick 
and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, For sure they I say to you, that as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you, and then he will answer them, saying, Surely I say to you, as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away to everlasting punishment, of the righteous into eternal life.
comes from stems from our Christianity, but it can be inspired by this. But it's not the same as as Christian love in, in an individual, concrete way, which we are called to have. That is, but Christian love, as such, he writes, is something different. And this difference is to be understood and maintained if the church is to preserve her unique mission and not become a mere social agency, which is that which she definitely is not. Christian love is the possible impossibility to see Christ in another man, whoever he is, and whom God in his eternal and mysterious plan has decided to introduce into my life. So we have to understand this. It's not to say that we should give to humanitarian organizations, which in fact we will, um, given the world conflicts, will be taking a, with the war, which we'll talk about a little later, we'll be taking humanitarian collection uh, next week for that. Not that we don't give to charities in our own community. These are all good things, but the point is, is missing the point. It's not to say missing the point entirely, but the, the point of the judgment is what is the state of my heart? That's what God looks for. When we stand before our Lord, is do I have a, a heart that has shown forth the works of love in a real way? Or did I, in a sense, try, try to get out of my responsibilities one way or another? And the, the way this can be manifest is very, very simply, am I able to show compassion to those who I might be inclined to overlook? to those who I might be having a difficult time with. And especially, it's highlighted in today's reading, you may care for the, the least of these my brethren, for the poor, the outcast, the forgotten, that God especially, our Lord Jesus Christ especially identifies with. To feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and the imprisoned. Of course, we recognize that this is not all-encompassing, but it's certainly a, a, a start that we have to realize that our Christianity must be practical, too, in a concrete way. I was reflecting on, on this last two years as well, when we've had within, within our own society uh, various divisions and, and tensions rising. I think that's fair to say, what, do we, what can we do with it? What can we practically do? And sometimes these thoughts can be overwhelming. The more I come back to it, it is to, in a very real and concrete way, to express our Christian love for our neighbor right here in our own life with the people that God places into our life, starting in our own community, starting in our own community. And we have to, to see this because more and more, and we see it now as a terrible war has suddenly broken out with, with, this, with this latest invasion. You know, there's the tendency, the danger, right? To divide people into, into, into friends and enemies, right? And to, and to divide one's heart into ways that are, are, are terrible. In order to overcome this, we must exercise concrete acts of love to see the image of God in each and every person, especially those who would be inclined uh, to want to overlook or to pass over or that have, or that have hurt us in all this way. And this is what, what God calls us to love, not just our neighbor, but even to love our enemies. His brothers and sisters, we operate on the order of, the, of this world. If we're always seeking to return evil for evil, right, to right wrongs in this sense, the cycle continues. When we stand before our God in the judgment seat, we're not going to be able to blame someone else. We're not going to be able to say, well, it's this person's fault I didn't do it or that. Our Lord will look at our heart and say, did you, did you love with my love? Did you love with my love? Did you, did you witness to my love in this world? In where you were placed, did you make this world a better place? Did the light of Christ shine? And we're called to that. We're called to that. It can seem overwhelming though, but the beautiful thing is that it's little by little we can make these transformations. When we look at the sheep in the parable, What's striking about them is that they don't know, their right hand does not know what their left hand is doing, does it? In the words of our Lord. They don't even realize that they have visited the poor, fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and so on. They're not even, in a sense, conscious of it. It's become such a rooted habit, if you will. So much a part of who they are. Well, how do you think they got there? Did it come overnight? Were they born that way? I don't think so. 
I think was with any, any habit that we cultivate, it begins with that difficult part of forcing ourselves to move outside of ourselves, to be a little bit vulnerable, and to help someone, to encounter someone, to reach out, to not say no, to not say I'm too busy, to not close off our heart immediately. And what happens is that the little by little, the more we can do this, the more we don't just shut down and close off and wall off our heart, the heart of stone little by little becomes a heart of flesh. And this transformation takes place. Today's Gospel reading, it's sobering but it's also hopeful. It's hopeful because God lets us know exactly what we can do to be His sheep, what it is like, and what other place would we want to be than among His flock, than to be among the faithful of our Lord. And so, with this, this inspiration for this, going forward, especially during the time of Lent, to not be stuck in our, in our own comfort zone, our own isolation, and especially not to be isolated through our, our anger, resentments, no matter how justified they may be. We have to, we are called to come through this in love, to force ourselves, and little by little, our hearts will be transformed, will be transformed. And this is what gives, this is what gives hope to the world. This is itself what can change the world. We want to change the world and begin by changing our own heart. That's the deception of the day. We can always think that the problem is somewhere else. We start here. This transformation, my own actions, my own, through what I can do differently, that can change little by little. That can change the world. It has a real impact on the lives of those around us. We, have, we are called to be the hands of Christ in this world. We are called to be the voice of Christ, encouraging, comforting, lifting up. So let us be that as we go forward to Great Land. Let us be inspired by today's reading to go forth and with our faith to live the acts of Christian love to the glory of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. To be glory with His Father from everlasting, to all holy good and life and spirit, now and ever, to the ages of ages. Amen.
Tell yourself a basketball or being entreated out of the deep compassion. Grant abundant rain to plant gardens. Overlooking our sin, let us send down the rains upon every place, entreating and praying for it. Make glad the face of the earth for the sake of our poor people and infants and animals and all others. Today, trust in thee, and help us raise the family of the season. Now, our God, and God, shall the mercy and save us, and we send them forward to the Father, to the Son, and to the Spirit. Now, never let us be made in our
and the gift of the Holy Spirit let us praise the Lord. That we may be delivered from all witchcraft, danger, and necessity, let us praise the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace.
Heavenly brothers and sisters of Christ,
must be an Orthodox Christian, you should have prepared through prayer, fasting, and a recent confession.
has precious blood given to us, the holy glorious of the apostles, who says to us, our fathers and the saints, and the young saints, the hearts of the Constantinople, of our fathers and the saints, the holy hero of Raphael, who wrote in his memory to the state, holy righteous hands, who stood up to of all the saints, have mercy on us to save us, and he has stood up to us. Uh, you know, so, songs of the uh, some different songs for whether 
Rav Masa needs a rather time sharing from this, but I haven't come within the context of everything that was is going on right now. I'll say a word in a minute. Create have a conversation about the spirit and all of this, and they share with me that their group itself has has members from uh, from the Ukraine, from Russia, from Belarus, and even from uh, from other Soviet republics, and that um, in this being able to sing songs from these different uh, Slavic cultures together, I think it offers something of great unity and hope at a time when the world is is uh, taking such a dark direction. And so I encourage them to to go ahead and to sing within the, with this spirit today. Um, this is something that's always rejoiced me about our parish, that we have people from so many different backgrounds, uh, Americans, but those from all different all different cultures and backgrounds. Whether Ukrainian, Russian, Greek, Serbian, uh, Arab, uh, Scottish, you know, all, all, all over, um, you know, Salvadorian, everything. So it's and it's and God brought, brings us all together. And so I think that's um, as a microcosm if we want to have uh, that, that that peace in the world uh, to to uh, manifest it within our, our parish community. It's a wonderful and beautiful thing. So we'll celebrate that as well, and I've heard the church kids in the church school, maybe some, some dancing opportunities for, for, for them as, as, as well for that. Um, it's, a, it's, my, it's a, also exciting to, to announce um, for our, our Great Lent uh, match this year, uh, thanks to the, the generosity of Joe and Sophia Lechek, uh, we are able to offer a $30,000 uh, matching challenge for the building program. Um, there is something where in, in, in their, their trust was given you know, kind of discretion, some discretion uh, to their daughter about how best to uh, to use those funds. But it went to really honor their desire to to build up the parish and to and, and to benefit others in the community. Building the new church, you know, will also expand the food closet that will bless the community. They wanted to inspire, uh, kind of inspire us as well with that. So it's um, really it's beginning today. Uh, something to really consider and pray about uh, to offer um, you know, a donation to our building fund and especially in honor of Joe and Sophia uh, th this Lent. Um, a few few other announcements we'll be hosting next weekend the Sunday of Orthodoxy Vespers. Um, sorry, not next weekend. I'm getting a week ahead of myself. In, in two weeks, two weeks Sunday of Orthodoxy Vespers. Um, so there is some the volunteers needed to, to bring dishes or to help with <coughs> preparations and cleanup. If you're wondering, please see Claudia. We'll also have a work day the Saturday before to clean up our gowns, present. Again, this is a great opportunity to, to show hospitality, to welcome, but also to, to stand together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, at a time when there's so much disunity in the world, I think it's so important for us in Sacramento to, to be uh, together to pray and, and praise our Lord in Jesus Christ. Um, pray, so with, with all that said, to pray especially for, as we did in the liturgy with the special petitions uh, for the suffering for the suffering people in Ukraine. Um, I know I, I don't want to get into you, know, you mentioned that you can re, you can read the news and see, and see the, the aspects of it. But many of the several cities in Ukraine are under siege right now. It's a scary time. Many of us uh, have family members and friends affected by it. And I would also to say, in terms of things that we can do, if you have if you have loved ones or those who are over there or, or being displaced or some way under threat, um, you know, some way find themselves in this conflict. Uh, if you'd like to pray for them, I think we should start a prayer list of those who are. And so you can send me those names. We can for those at least within our within our our, our family and friends who we know who are affected by this. We can pray for them. Uh, pray for them. Uh, by name, and to pray that, that, that peace be restored quickly uh, to that land. Um, we'll also be having a humanitarian collection um, next Sunday. I think the OCA are trying to figure out where best to direct that funds. I, I think it might go to, to helping some of the refugees uh, who will find themselves in, in, in Poland and Romania and other places, but we'll, um, we'll have more information on, on what that gets decided next week. Uh, today, as we mentioned, there's a church school, but no, no adult class. We have our bleeding luncheon um, on, on Tuesday, food class in the morning. And I didn't get this on the schedule, but there is UC Davis OCF in the evening. So all the college students take note. Uh, it'll be at the Belfry at 7 o'clock Tuesday evening. Uh, Wednesday evening, Vespers and Orthodox Faith the Life class beginning at 6. Thursday morning, Mountains at 9. And uh, next, next 
a week. It's hard to believe, but Great Lent is already upon us. Um, next Sunday is Forgiveness Sunday, so we'll have Divine Liturgy with the, with the Forgiveness Vespers, and we'll write a Forgiveness uh, immediately after. And, and Lent, and Lent is, is, is here, here upon us. Um, so again, it's time to really prepare our hearts. They call today Meat Fair Sunday, we say bye-bye to meat. Uh, it's sort of about a week that uh, we, we, we begin to get ourselves uh, begin to enter into the fast. Uh, da dairy and cheese is, is, uh, is, is blessed all week long. Um, as we kind of not just to focus on food, as, as the epistle reading mentioned, but to really prepare our, prepare our hearts uh, to, I think especially this year, with everything that we've been through and that's going on in the world, to really enter into the spirit of the past with seriousness, to draw close to our Lord and, and to, to pray for the world to be, to be transformed. So, uh, again, don't miss next Sunday. Forgiveness Sunday is, is something that's so important and that we all need. We all need to forgive. We need to forgive each other, our brothers and sisters in Christ, everything that could be on our hearts. So, uh, God bless you all. Anything else that I would like to? Well, well, well uh, again, and um, since the beginning, congratulations to our, our newly received uh, catechumens, Sam and Ian and Michael. Um, it's, it's a great joy. I say newly enrolled, I think, is the term, as you're preparing for Holy Illumination. Uh, soon we got, God bless you all. Lord, may, the people, may you all go in peace with us and Lord be upon you. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee, our God.